This is the Asus M3 Wired ROG Chakram Core, Wired ROG Carries, and presently the Wireless ROG Gladius 3. You can check out our review of each mouse at the links in the video description. We use all our review mice for a minimum of one month and a half, so there is plenty of time for us to get rid of the unboxing hype so that it doesn't interfere with our genuine feelings about the mouse. So that our review to you guys is useful and holistic and not just a buy this and not that. I'm Rafael from Hardware Sugar, the only PC shop in the Philippines with no BS warranty, and this is our ultimate mouse highlights guide for 2021 and our review of the wireless ROG Gladius 3. The investment in a good mouse might be the cheapest and also the most productive investment you can make for your computer setup, regardless of if you are a gamer or not. It doesn't cost as much as a new graphics card or sometimes even a decent keyboard. In fact, if you only had the budget to invest in either a good mouse or a keyboard, hands down, invest in a good mouse. Don't make my mistake when I bought a mouse which was too small for my hands. Let's do a quick product review of the Wireless Gladius 3 first. It and the Caris look extremely similar, and most of everything I said about the Caris are true for the Gladius as well. They both have a very similar sculpted hand design, which is very comfortable to use for medium to large hand users, me being the latter. And they made this excellent design choice of making the entire scroll wheel RGB rather than just the sides. This design choice is unique, I believe, to ROG. And you won't see this on other premium mouse brands such as Razer, SteelSeries, and Corsair. The RGB designs of which still just color the sides of the scroll wheel rather than the wheel itself. Where it differs in design is the etching on the left side which reminds me of computer code from The Matrix. If you look closer, it's the words ROG, Dare to Play, Gladius, and Republic of Gamers in small font which are lit up through the RGB within the mouse. Another difference is that the Gladius has a button next to the scroll wheel which you can use to change your sensitivity in case you are sniping or switching from sniper to assault. I'll talk more about this later. Worthy to point out however is that the Caris is ever so slightly smaller and shorter than that of the Gladius 3. The Gladius 3 is wireless thus it comes with a 3 GHz sensor. In terms of actual real world usage, I couldn't tell the difference between the Caris and the Gladius 3. Both of them are very accurate and glide across a mouse pad wonderfully for extreme FPS gaming precision. The wired Caris weighs in at 62 grams while the wireless Gladius 3 weighs in at 79 grams. These mice are extremely light on their feet. To put things in context, the ROG Chakram Core clocks in at 111 grams or close to double the weight of the Caris. The battery life of the Gladius 3 is also great, lasting close to 4 days of moderate to heavy usage and charges up via USB-C in practically no time at all. I didn't religiously count how long it takes to charge each mouse, but uh, if a 30 minute charge can keep it going for 2 days straight, then that's more than acceptable for mostly everyone's needs. It also comes with the paracord or what I like to call the shoelace style wire which I think every hardware developer must begin using as their standard. It's just plain awesome how freely it bends and feels in the hand. We would give the Gladius 3 a 8 out of 10 primarily for its minimalist look, subtle yet novel RGB design and for it being wireless and USB-C chargeable. The only drawback is the cost of it being 6,500 pesos or for being the most expensive mouse we have ever reviewed. Then again, if you are buying ROG, you already know that quality doesn't come cheap. I only wish it had one feature which exists on the very cheapest of ASUS mice, which I'll talk about in a bit. Alright, now let's get into the specifics of all the other mice. In terms of productivity, I highly recommend the ROG Chakram Core over all the mice here because it has 9 programmable switches, even if it only has 6 buttons. The prize here is the small thumbstick which is well ergonomically placed which allows you to move it up, down, left, and right, each direction of which can be programmed to any key you want. Having 9 programmable switches on a gaming mouse is really helpful for getting work done and I personally liked having it so I can minimize all my windows during times of emergency in case I was looking at something I shouldn't be looking at. It works great as a gaming mouse as well and you can bring down the overall weight of the mouse from 111 grams to 97 grams. Something I didn't attempt to do because I don't have the courage to take apart a mouse I don't own just yet. Note that the weight of the care is at 62 grams and the Gladys at 79 grams still makes these mice a lot lighter by far. 
I reviewed the wired version of the Chakram, however it does have a wireless version which is double the price. The runner-up mice for productivity is the Corsair Wireless Iron Claw, simply because it is literally studded with buttons of all shapes, sizes, and placements. The button placements also feel quite natural when you begin using the mouse. Weighing in at 105 grams and its almost Batmobile tank-like design, this guy feels extremely sluggish compared to the Keras and the Gladius 3. However, while it seems sluggish, as a right-hand user, I find the grip where I rest my thumb to be extremely comfortable because of how it seems to massage my thumb. In terms of sheer FPS gaming, the Keras Gladius 3 and the Asus M3 must be on your shortlist, simply because these mice were bred to be light, responsive, and meant to help dominate the FPS field. While the Asus M3 might be the cheapest mouse in the entire list, costing only 980 pesos, it has one feature which the other two don't, and that is the ability to change mouse sensitivity both ways. Two buttons allow you to lower and increase the mouse sensitivity at your choosing, rather than the Gladius 3 which only has one button on top, allowing you to change mouse sensitivity in one direction. The worst is the Keras, in which there is no button on top at all, and you can only change sensitivity for it by flipping it on its back and pressing the button there. And even then, it only changes sensitivity also in one direction. I promise you that you will be dead well before you get the desired sensitivity you need in combat. So yes, while the Keras and Gradius 3 are flashier, pricier, and lighter than the M3, they lack a key tactical element which is indispensable for any professional gaming mouse. The fact that this is offered on such a budget-friendly mouse makes this a no-brainer option for young gamers on a tight budget. The M3 is a great gaming mouse for its price range and I extremely recommend it for gamers on a tight budget. The M3 should serve as a reminder to ASUS that one of their cheapest mice offers something not even some of their most expensive products do. For those who don't know, ASUS owns ROG, so the fact that the design Design teams didn't talk about adding this basic feature into the ROG mice line leaves me a little bit baffled. However, as an FPS gamer, I'm not really a sniper and so I don't change my sensitivity as often. However, it's nevertheless an option I would much prefer to have as a safety blanket. If you're looking for the mouse to end all mice, you may want to look into the Keras and the Gladius because they are built to be deconstructed. They come with replaceable mouse switches, which means that when the time comes that your mouse begins to suffer double clicking, you can open it up and place in new switches. It is important to note that ROG does not provide clear instructions on how this is done, and I was too afraid to try it out myself. Nevertheless, some YouTubers have been able to swap out their switches and even comment that the Japanese Omron switches given for free with the Keras feel better than the switches that come pre-installed with it. In short, buying these mice will last you a long time because just like a car with a flat tire, you can always change out the tires. Note, however, that if your problem lays elsewhere, such as the scroll wheel or the RGB, then there is no quick fix for that. And if you lose the replaceable switches, which is easy to do, then you wouldn't benefit from this longevity. In terms of gaming on a budget, I would highly recommend the Asus M3 mouse because it retails for less than a thousand pesos and it gets so many practical things done correctly, such as quick mouse sensitivity change. Changing sensitivity isn't just important for shooters, but also for productivity, especially if you are working with two or more monitors. The extra screen real estate definitely requires a boost. And while you can eventually reach your desired sensitivity, the other mice require you to go through the entire cycle before you do, and if you miss it, then you have to keep pressing all over again. For a wireless budget option, the Corsair Harpoon priced at 2795 might seem appealing at first, but for only a couple of pesos more at 3950 you could already get the Corsair Wireless Iron Claw which is so much more ergonomic and comfortable to use than the Harpoon. If you have big hands, stay clear from the Corsair Wireless Harpoon. Your hand will cramp up eventually. While it may seem heavy at first, the Corsair Iron Claw is precise enough that I've never felt that I missed any shots when doing intense gaming. And in terms of productivity, the many button options and the ability to change my sensitivity in both directions makes me recommend it as the better wireless gaming mouse option on the market. The biggest limitation of our study is that I haven't gamed with a Steel Series or Razer mouse in a long time, and so it's entirely possible you might find the perfect fit for your hand and budget in a different brand or Asus mouse model. What I can say, however, is that regardless of brand, aim for a mouse which is naturally comfortable to the touch and 
practical for what you need to use it for. I might have come down hard on the Keras and Gladius for the lack of an additional sensitivity button, but they are nevertheless serious contenders because of how light they are. It is because of these mice that I actually began researching on the different weight of a mouse in addition to their other features. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing to Hardware Sugar where we review anything gamer related. And sometimes chairs. We want to give an extremely special thanks to our top fans who helped make all of our work possible. ITX Addict, Rafael James, Ian Meru, Liam Magnae, Richard Onkinko, John Ruben Ochia, and Christian Espinosa. It's good seeing all of you so regularly during our streams, and again, thank you so much for the support.